there it is, ladies and gents. <laughs> work, work, work. And sometimes the technology doesn't want to work with you, but we figured it out and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get this show off and rolling. We want to have some fun because that's what we do on the show. And today's guests are going to show us how to do that. Here we All go. All right. Shut up, shut up and sit down. Sit down. The Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business on social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. Business Bros. Fire here real quick. You know, I don't really have as much as the fire intro that James normally has. But like I said last time, James is taking a little break. He's got some back issues he's working through. So let's see if I can do him some justice. Work is work and fun is fun. Now, you were taught those two things are different. Well, not anymore. As more and more Americans leave the workforce in search of that new career, smart employers are making fun work culture decisions our guests today are here to share some uh share with us how fun must be a priority in the workplace in order to increase productivity and retention today's guests are the authors of their new book work made fun gets done easy ways to boost energy morale and results so welcome to the show bob nelson and mario tamayo where my party oh, Hey, okay, <laughs> Holmes. Crowd, crowd surfing. Oh boy. Let's do this view. Let's do this view. That way we get all of us on the screen at the same time. All right, guys. Uh, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you for taking time to hop on the show. Sorry for the technical delays, but we are here. We're ready to rock and roll. Fun. Uh, I gotta start off with this because um the idea behind what we do on the Business Bros podcast is not just to create fun and engaging podcast content, but to create content that you can use to market and grow your business. So the first question I got for you guys, what do you do? What is it that you do? <laughs> what do you do guys? Somebody who wants to go first, Bob we're, or Mario? We're professional podcasters. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what I'm go talking about. Podcast to podcast. And hey, I we, you know, we, we do, we're, we're uh, we're uh, consultants, you know, speakers, uh, coaches, that type of stuff. Mixed bag. I've I've got um, this is actually my thirty first book. I've sold five million books, so um, try, I try to have an impact out there, give useful information to people, and, and I have a special style of doing that. All my books are filled with a hundred percent actual examples from real people who are named and cited so it's not it's not making stuff up and here's some theories to scratch your head about it's here's things that are wor it's working right now and they'll work for you too if you give it a try so and that's what we we brought in to focus on this topic because as you said most of us have this in the back of our mind that that uh work and fun are supposed to be different and you feel guilty if you're having fun at work and someone's going to catch you and you certainly don't want to work when you're trying to have fun so uh but things have merged over over time and for example the millennials which is the largest uh group of employees in the workforce now about almost close to 75 percent 59 percent say fun is a high priority for them even in the job they're doing so unless you unless you uh meet them at that expectation they will leave they will <laughs> A whole different culture, right? I mean, I when when you say fun at work, in in my mind, I think of like Google, for example. You go to Google's complex, and it is not the cubicle, worn down, clock in, clock out that you get when you think of you know like office space or something like that, right? Yeah. This it's a, it's a completely Bicycles, different free environment. Free food, yes, a lot of flexibility. Yes, you're you're right that they that they get work done, but they do it in a context that's a little bit larger that makes it. Uh, enjoyable makes it people looking forward to come to work a, exactly. a little bit different i mean yeah, no, they spend a lot of money to do that you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to to create a you know a, a party environment you can you can uh, do things in the course of people's jobs and they can do things in the course of the tasks that they're doing to make them more fun and that's those are some of the levels that we get into in the book we talk about the 
what you can do as an individual with anything you're working on, what you can do as a leader of a team, what you can do as part of a team, and then what you can do as an organization to make this part of how we do things around here. And the, I'll tell you, one of the reasons that uh, that your listeners today and your viewers want to hear about this book is there's over 400 different ways, as Bob said, that are real life stories, real life examples. But mo almost mm -hmm. all of them are low to no cost ways. So you don't have to spend a lot of money or any money at all to have fun at work and get the benefits from it. And what are those benefits? Well, you become you become the most competitive organization in your category out there. Bob, you got some you got some data out there. I think you yeah, we share. we shared in the all all my books are research based, and, and part of the research that we hung uh, on this book was that uh, we looked at the best places to work institute that does the 100 best places to work published by fortune magazine every year and we looked at their data that for those those employees that work at those best places 81 percent say that they work in a fun environment for the people that apply for the award but don't get it it's only 60 60 percent almost a 20 percent differential and that's actually one of the if not the large the most significant uh, difference in any variable in the study so it says <laughs> they figured out something here that this fun this fun piece uh, helps to change everything, helps to change the culture where now if people enjoy what they're doing, who they're doing it with, work becomes not work anymore, it becomes enjoyable, that you're excited and, and you're anxious to help out your coworkers and to serve the, the customer and you're happy to do so. So no one's dragging you to the party where you're not just there because of the paycheck and watching the clock all the time. You're, you're actually into what you're, you're, uh, you want to do what they want you to do. You're absolutely right. You know, and when you think about what you're describing right now, that, that fun workplace, it's in competition, especially today with work from home. I mean, you're really competing with the, you know, I, 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 I've been teaching part-time for a while and they went on distant learning during uh, COVID. And let me tell you, to be able to take a break and use my own bathroom, to be able to take <laughs> a break and go open my own refrigerator, those are fun perks uh, yeah. that, that as an employer, you now kind of have to compete with because, I mean, I'm hiring people all over the world, not necessarily in my own neighborhood. It's very, it's, it's very expensive to keep somebody here, um, but the productivity level could be really much higher if I can get people to come into the office. And you're talking about competing with home. How do I compete with home? Like, you know, I guess this is the next question, right? Well, first, you know, how do you get, in, in this case, customer acquisition for you as employees, right? How do you get the employees it. to come back? Well, first, I feel compelled to correct something you just said. You said that people, you need people to have here because they're more productive here. And actually, the research begs to differ. The research, uh, a recent study, um, uh, by actually Microsoft uh, found that 81% of employees said uh, said they were more productive at home. So, um, and of course, that's going to vary on your circumstances. Like I see in your workplace, where you don't have a couple kids running around, that might right. that might you know get in the way of being productive. But I know Mario's workplace; he's got a dog, usually at his feet. Is he there now? No, no. She's yeah. So hey. that, that's kind of nice, and you know just. Pet, taking a break, petting the dog, that, that's uh, soothing. It actually lowers your your stress level. So, you know, some things that uh, we have at home, we actually need to have wherever you work. And even in the office, you know, we don't just have to, uh, you know, if we can allow, loosen up and allow people flexibility and allow the office to be more comfortable, uh, then maybe the, they, they won't feel as compelled to want to work from home. There, there are know, a lot that, that do still want that, though. You know, the, the smart companies today, they realize that what got them to where they are today is not going to get them to where they need to go. And that's why we have this hybrid workforce. Companies are struggling trying to find, how do I make sure that people who work at the headquarters or work in, in our building are going to be safe and get, are going to be enjoyable and get their work done? And how do I make sure that people at home are going to do the same thing? Yeah, so, it's, it's actually more more to worry about than you used to have. And, and it's, you know, part of our message is that don't think it's going to go back to how it used to be because we now are, are two years into it and people that um, work from home that enjoy it want to keep working from home and in 58 percent uh in research I, I saw said 
so that they will quit their employer if they force them to come back to the office. <laughs> and they'll mm -hmm. find another job that they can work from home. You know, that's becoming more and more the norm. So unless you have to be there because you're a meat packer or you're, or you're you know, packing stuff for Amazon or, or that's where the customer is, um, more jobs are not, it's, it's not required. So then let's, let's move into, you know, in business, for the most part, it's problem solution. Now, you guys are our mentors and coaches. Um, you have your authors. So what what is it that you're solving? What problem do you see in the marketplace that you need to resolve with the books, with the coaches? Hey, we've got a problem here. <laughs> we're, we're solving the problem. We're helping to solve the problem <laughs> of having employees stay engaged at work we're, because of what's going on. You know, everything's up up in the air right now. People don't know what to do. People are quitting their jobs left and right. You know, mm -hmm. they're talking about the great resignation. So what we're doing out there is we're helping companies find out different things they can do to, to keep their people engaged with them, whether they work at home or not. By the way, we have one full chapter in our book is devoted to having fun virtually. Because, Virtual fun. Absolutely. Because you got to, you got to, you got to have, you, you got to give your employees wherever they work the the reason to stay working the reason to to put out to to devote and dedicate their time and do their best job and the only way to do that is if you provide what they need which so hey will... quick quick technique on that just to be adding value as we go here is that i i, I like to advocate a thing called i call it a, a praise barrage mm -hmm. praise barrage and that's where you, you're on a zoom call or, and and with your team and say before we get started let's just go around the group and I, as i call someone's name like everyone else to, to say what they most value about working with that person. 100% positive. Let's start with Gary. Okay, now Sally. And 10 minutes later, what have you done? Everyone has gotten real-time feedback from people they work with that's made them feel great. And whatever you called out about them is going to be repeated because what gets recognized gets repeated. So it's a really good thing to pump people up and also give them practical feedback where they can continue to be good. What, what, do, you, what do you tell people when they say things like, look, uh, at some point, we're creating too many uh, weak people here. It's not all about fun. <laughs> Eventually, the work has got to get done. Stop catering to all their feelings, right? Everybody has all these feelings with this cancel culture. Why can't I, I just say guy. things like, dude, <laughs> let's get to work, right? Like, like I, I understand the fun part, but I'm not paying you to have fun. I'm paying you to work. What do you say to people who come in and, you know, give you that kind of pushback? Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> we show we show them the data, and, and Bob yeah, already yeah. Bob already mentioned the data about about the uh, the top 100 co best companies to work for. We just show them that data. Look, 81 percent of the employee of 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 the employees who are working at the best companies say they're working at a great, a fun work environment. Yeah. So, so if, if you, you want to have a great company, you better take that into mind. It's not just uh, lip service. This is this is really it's a real a real thing you got to pay attention to now because you never have in the past doesn't mean you don't need to now. The workforce is different. The times are changing. You got to focus on different things. You can't just come in. I mean, what you reference in terms of well, I pay you to work, you know, play on the weekend. Uh, that doesn't work anymore because if, if that's your attitude with most employees, millennials high tech people, nah, they won't even come to begin with. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I don't like your attitude. You're not, you're not. Uh, they, they get ghost. The companies get ghosted. People yeah. leave. And they don't even tell people where they're going. And then and they say, oh, you know, we got, we, we've got more people who are leaving. We our, our turnover rate's really high. Something must be bad. Well, what's happening is a lot of those people are going to another place that where they're getting their needs met. Yeah. And <laughs> it may be your competitor that they, that they have, have, uh, pivoted a little bit faster than you have and they're taking this seriously than than trying to to hunker down on a on a philosophy from the 1940s you know <laughs> well, Work. Bob, yeah okay well, all right bob fair 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 right but but let me ask you this i mean you have you know this sounds great for the googles of the world and the amazons of the world but i got two employees and myself right or i got you know a va and myself like what what can i possibly do to make this more engaging to make this fun environment where people want to come to work well let me give you another simple effective no cost thing thank them mm -hmm. thank them when they do a good job don't think of just to be nice oh you're great don't say that say wow 
you you made that deadline. I, that was a real challenge. I know that you used, you know had to do some of that at home, or th that really took you longer than you expected. But you came through. Way to go! That that simple action of being thanked, and acknowledged, reinforces the effort. You're going to get it again from that person, and they're going to have a, a stronger bond with you because you you paid attention. You noticed. You noticed when they when they really made it happen. Most most companies today that they 85 percent of employees today feel overworked and underappreciated. Mm. 85 percent. It's not that hard to thank someone. It's not that hard to start a meeting and say, "Hey, before we get going, I, I want to just mention that uh, a few people that, uh, that, that who, who really knocked it out of the park this week. You know, Tom uh, landed a new account, and, and Sally jumped in to help Sal. You know, Jane on a project without being asked. This is the type of thing of uh, working together that is, is really so strong. I really appreciate your efforts. You know, a simple. And if that's if that's heartfelt, it's meaningful to people. It truly is. Uh, the number one Robert Half International found the number one reason why people leave jobs is that they don't feel uh, they aren't thanked for the job they're hired to do. Well, we mm. shouldn't have to thank you. We're paying you. Well, guess what? <laughs> you, you can get a paycheck anywhere, but you don't get appreciated for who you are and what you did at, at that many and, places. It turns out. And by the right? way. By the way, some people they'll come home and they'll tell their their significant other, "God, I had a lot of fun at work today." Well, what happened? My boss thanked me. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. I know, really don't get it. I really enjoyed it. So one thing or, about our book or, or, is or they, they may not even say that. They may they may say the boss thanked me, and wow, you're wow, you're really going, you're making things happen to have your boss or your boss's boss said something. Wow. You're getting great visibility there. You're, you're, you're going to be, you're on your way. You know, this I am great. noticed, right? Yeah, I'm noticed. noticed. I exist yeah. in this exactly. chain of command. You're, you're valued. People. You're valued. Yeah. yeah. We, we all want to be valued. That's, you know, we all want, you know, I, I heard an interview with uh, Oprah Winfrey and she said of all the people she's ever talked to, and that includes mass murderers or presidents, they all want to be validated. That yeah. as soon as the camera's off, they turn to here, you know, President Bush turns to her and says, How did I do? You know, it's like, <laughs> President Bush, or everyone wants that feedback. They want to feel that they, they did their best on whatever the circumstances were. And and certainly if you're being paid to do that, you, that's of high importance too. It's like I wanna I wanna keep working here, I want a chance to earn more or to do more. Uh, that starts with people recognizing what you've done to begin with. 85% well, say they don't get it. Only 12% of employees say they feel recognized in ways they find meaningful. 12%. And, how many, and how many managers think they're doing it, Bob? 80%. 80%. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I can do there's that. that. I can do that. I know you could do it. Are you doing it? That's the question. There's a, there's a big thing I call the knowing doing gap in management where managers know the right thing to do, but that's, they're too busy or it's not a high enough priority, so they don't actually get around to doing it. And another, another simple one is involving, involving people in decision making. How That's like you'll get a better decision. You'll probably be implemented faster. You know, you could even say, hey, I, I'm the one that's responsible for making the final decision, but I know it'll be a better one if I get your all's feedback. So give me your thoughts on this. How is and that fun, feel, Bob? They feel, they feel respected. They feel heard. Wow, my, the boss cares about what I have to say. Bob, how, how, <laughs> how is that fun? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's it's fun to me to be asked and to be thanked and to be, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Is that fun to you, Mario? You know, it, um, Maybe, you know, three, okay. somewhat, but one of the things is what we found out when we came up with all these examples, Ekron, is that what's fun for some people is not fun for others. Mm -hmm. And and some people come home and they say, oh, I got thanked. That was fun. Or I got two projects done. That was fun. Or somebody yeah. else says, oh, we went and we saw a movie today and that was a lot of fun. Or we, or we, or our boss took us out for lunch. So yeah, popcorn what, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> however you define fun, it's different for different people. This so one of the point. things one of the things we tell people is when you start to when you make a concerted effort to have more fun at work, you have to find out what your people think is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And give them what, what they need. It's not just what you think. You do what you think is fun. And uh, Mara and I worked at a for for a company where the CEO was a big golfer. So for a company <laughs> outing <laughs> His idea first, we're gonna take everyone out to the golf course and golf yeah. golf together. For him, it's another day on the links. For everyone else, they're going, Oh my god, what am I gonna wear? I'm so terrible, people are gonna laugh at me. It was a crisis, you know. I mean, I'll call him sick that day, you know. Yeah. And uh, so it, it, all that goes away if you start with saying, 
hey, what would you all like to do to sell? If we're successful, not just you know to, for crazy time, but if you're successful at this project or this deadline or whatever it is, what would you like to do? What would be meaningful to you? We have an example, one example in the book about a CEO that he, he grappled with that. And he said, I everything I picked out, you know, I thought was a good idea. None of them worked. People people didn't show. They they didn't want to come. They you know they felt they had to, and it wasn't what they wanted. And finally stopped pushing so hard. Instead, he got a millennial and said, hey, would you be interested in doing this? Yes, I would. And I <laughs> used social media tools to find the best timing and, and to survey people and, and came back with some options. And it, it just wouldn't like, and, and in fact, they ended up doing a uh, one of these, um, one of these uh, medieval times dinner shows. Everyone loved it. Yeah, the kids had a good time. time. Well, yeah. Okay. And, so and, filtering through that, right? Filtering through the ideal employer or the ideal employee, or like, like who is this best fit for? Like when you're talking about making work fun, not everybody is into that. Not everybody is into this event or into this. So who is that ideal person? I am looking for qualities beyond the physical. Yeah, the <laughs> qualities that aren't so physical. Like, what are you looking for in in? We are mere, we are really only following the orders that you have. <laughs> <laughs> With the accent and everything, I love it. The meetings will continue till morale improves. I got everything you said except for the part after. Now listen, Mario. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tune off here. You guys continue, okay? <laughs> Well, oh, we have, what was your have, question? <laughs> who, who is this best served for? Okay, so I mean, we, we, you, you've told me about a bunch of different types of employees. You've told me about different types of employers. Who is the ideal prospect here? Who are you looking for? I'm talking. I'm telling you that everybody, everybody wants to be trusted. Everybody wants to be respected. Everybody wants to have feel good about what they do with their life, and if they can have some fun and 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 excitement, that you know, then it's a lure to to want them to do whatever it is you you need from them. I, we, I feel that's universal. And yeah, we're talking, we're talking, go ahead. Give you another one. Uh, <laughs> like when someone makes a mistake, you know, every, you know the, the, the average manager is quick to call it out and prove they're the smartest one in the room and embarrass them in front of their peers. Well, bravo, bravo. You're the smartest person in the room. That person's getting their resume ready because you're a jerk, you know? So, you know, so you, you have an opportunity. Someone makes a mistake. Take a take a step back and a breath and say, "Hey, I'm not sure I would do it the same way, but what'd you learn from that?" Yeah, yeah. Take, well, it reminds me of the long term view of that relationship with that employee that you want to have around for a while instead of instead of uh, you know pushing them, their face in the mud and having you know, everyone laugh at them. Ernan, I would challenge you to think of any type of business to take any type of industry you can think of it and ask if they like to have fun, and I'll tell you that probably one of those types is in this book. Because we, we have, have all, government, all size companies, all size nonprofits, you know. uh, education. We have the top, the big names you've heard about, like the Googles and the Amazons, and we also have the five person uh, mom and pop shops that do yeah. design work. It's, it's about getting that buy-in, right? Like, I mean, I, I, I told you, I, I teach part-time high school and what the other teachers are always impressed with is they always give me the classes of the kids that aren't doing so well in school, right? So I get those yeah. kids. Uh, and, but they're always giving me those because I tend to get most of them to do things. And they're always impressed, right? Like, how do you do that? I'm like, because like, I play music in my classroom, because I talk to them like human beings, because mm -hmm. I make there jokes, because mm -hmm. we have fun. And as soon as you get people to buy into something to want to be there to want to learn to want to be part of a project all of a sudden the results speak for themselves that does it you're on the next edition of the book <laughs> that's it that's it that's, you're, you're describing exactly what we're trying to capture and and you you brought yourself your whole self to the job so you're not going through the motions and and then people saw that and they felt that and you you brought them in by doing that just by by demonstrating your own energy by having fun yourself by including them, and and that made them feel special when the other teachers didn't. That's that's a, that we've all seen that that scenario. We've all had good teachers and bad teachers. We've all had mentors that have pulled us aside in, in life, and we've had a lot of people that have never noticed who we were. Yeah. So. You know, Hernan, if I had you as a teacher, I wouldn't have had two high schools that invited me to leave. Invited <laughs> me to leave, and, and he would have graduated. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. This is this was before this is before the GED. So knock it off. That hurt. 
Oh, All right, well, man. Let's, well, let's, let's talk about uh, you guys got any any promos or giveaways or anything that you guys are doing? I'm giving away free money. Now, you don't have to give away free money or anything, but what do you got going on? I love this. Hey, that was me. These. You had a picture of me on there. <laughs> Hey, we will. We'd be glad to uh, to donate, like uh, like you name it, uh, five, ten copies of our book to um, either to, to you or you can have people email us and we would send them complimentary for listening to your bro your broadcast. Uh, so that's something as a you can't get much better than the giveaway. So, than so both people right? right now, both people who are listening, we will send them a book. Exactly. You you. <laughs> yeah. We well, always, we always yeah. talk about that. Our 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 loyal our four loyal listeners uh, are going to give you uh, a call and make sure that they get a copy of the book. Well, That's like, Uncle like John and Tia Tia Anita. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mom, Dad, mother-in-law, father-in-law. Say you things don't happen by magic. So actually, we have to physically get the, them sending us their. A, their mailing address so we can physically put our real book in the mail to them so yeah. all right well that brings up there. that brings up the next clip to my friend. <laughs> how do i get a hold of you guys so if we're, if we're ready to rock and roll we want to get a copy of the book we want to find out more about your coaching oh programs we want to find out more about how i can make my work culture fun how do we do that well the book is everywhere any place that sells books amazon your local bookstore uh, we, I also have it on Barnes my website. Noble. Yes, uh, my website, uh, www.drbobnelson.com. We have um, this book and all the books that I've written are available at discounted prices, by the way, better than Amazon. And, and Mario, if you, want, if you want coaching, Mario's your guy. Oh, no, Bob's the guy. So you, you, you can get the ebook, you can get the audio book, uh, you can get them anywhere. But the best deal is through Dr. Bob's website. Mm. drbobnelson.com right there that's right we, dr bob nelson yo and then and then we 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 both uh work with companies on these and related concepts of recognition we've mentioned several times employee engagement retention um and um right here so, in san diego bob's worked with qualcomm and uh, petco and i've worked with petco as well it's uh yeah, actually, I've had the the good fortune to work with about eighty percent of the Fortune five hundred. So, in my twenty five year career on doing all this, and it's uh, it's fun. It, you know, you wouldn't, you can't keep doing that if you don't enjoy it. And more than the paycheck, you you see the results of your of your helping people, and you see how it impacts them. Uh, but Mario also does uh, individual coaching. If you got a manager that uh, executive in your company that's not doesn't get this, you know, it's not fun. Yeah, and sometimes breaking through. I get those guys, okay. <laughs> you know, breaking through and and uh, and having them work with someone to see the value and to see how to to work it into their daily behaviors is is critical. And and a lot of, most people can't do that on their own. If they if they could have, they already would have, you know. But a lot of people, it's a blind spot to them, or they're offering out of old values, such as you know you initially indicated why why isn't it good enough just to pay people I say well if it was 1920 maybe that would have been good i'm not even sure it worked then e either but certainly not today it's not good enough it's not good enough with the millennials it's not good enough with high-tech employees it's not good enough with most employees actually even even uh, laborers if, <clears throat> if if you have i mean i have i have uh wonderful uh, people that that maintain our yard if if i treated them like dirt they wouldn't hang around. They would quit in a heartbeat. You know? So it doesn't really matter the level of pay to, to give people respect and, and to um, um, make their their work uh, not just um, enjoyable, but, but appreciative. Mm. All right, fellas. Well, uh, we're coming up on our time here. So one of the things I love to do is uh, kind of recap and, uh, and and make my own version of what it is that I learned from today's podcast. So for ladies and gentlemen out there, it's time for me to do. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> right. So let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. Look, uh, I don't know about you guys, but if you want to go to work and have fun every single day, a place where you actually enjoy going to work and maybe right now that's not the place you're working at, then I suggest <laughs> you guys go and get a copy of uh, Dr. Bob Nelson and Mario Tamayo's book. Uh, and it just it's easy to get. All you got to do is Paper you can bath. find it anywhere. But 
I suggest you go to www.drbobnelson.com because like anything else, mention that you got it on the business, you heard them on the Business Bros podcast, so you guys can get that huge discount. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. Yeah, you can get it on Kindle. Yeah, you can do all those things. But go to www.drbobnelson.com. Get it there. Save yourself some money and get ready to have some fun. Wake up every day, ready to go to work. Not Guaranteed because you have to, if you don't because you really want to. Three ideas that make whatever you're doing more enjoyable. It will refund your money because uh, it's, I, I, I keep using it. And I wrote the thing with Mario. It's sort of like, you know, because I, I was very uh, collecting all this information from people and interviewing them. Uh, we learned quite a lot. And one of the things Mario pointed out is that for no two people, fun is the same thing. So uh, a lot of techniques that people use that I use because I, I learned from them and wow, that, that really works for you. I'm going to try it. And sure enough, wow, they were right. It did work, you know. So what we recommend is you, you open the book and you go to, it's not, it's not a read cover to cover book. It's a reference book. So you go to a different chapter, like for example, the one on, on virtual fun or whatever. You look up in that area for ideas. And then if you don't like any of those examples, just turn the page. Because there's mm -hmm. probably going to be on the next page something that you can try. Mm -hmm. And what we do, what Bob's done and, and uh, what, what I've done, is we, we get the book and we, we give it to managers. And we tell them, okay, at your next meeting, you pass this one book around to all your people. And you have them put in and, and put in a check mark or, or a, their initials, uh, or initials next to one of the ideas in here that they would really like to do. And then mm -hmm. you know what you have? Now you have the best idea for that one individual person and you have it for, you, for your whole team. And kind then what, motivation handbook. And then what you do group. for the rest of the quarter, or the rest of the six months or whatever, you do each one of those at a different time. Yeah. And you're doing things that people really like. Or, and don't forget the key part. responsibilities so that they can, they can bring forward the idea they want to do. And I, I know uh, Mara and I, we've worked together at several companies and, and one time when we were in the same department, we, we would have, you know, we'd, ha we'd start the, the meetings with a joke uh, each time. And we and we, we asked people to who wants to do next meetings. And so it got everyone involved. And even if they weren't good at telling jokes, they got better at it. And even if they told a bad joke, we still laughed. So <laughs> <laughs> bad jokes are somebody sometimes better than the uh, than the yeah, good ones. When, you, yeah. when you butcher, when you start with the punchline, then you get to laugh at <laughs> didn't quite go the way you're supposed to go so yeah and you know that. and you know how it is when you're, you're in a meeting and pe different people want to talk at the same time we also introduced the coconut what's the coconut we said look we put took a coconut we threw it out into our meeting and said whoever has the coconut can talk mm, so when somebody we so, was done we were so excited people were talking on top of each other all the time and so we had to bring some order to it and we did it in a fun way you know Hey, give me the coconut. My turn, you know, and and that was it. We didn't do it forever. Know, like, we did it for a while, and then we and then you know, uh, the great thing about doing a lot of different techniques is that it's okay to retire someone. Yes. So we'll let that one go. We'll maybe we'll bring it back later, but it's okay. And companies I've worked with, they do that all the time. Like Disney has, uh, at Walt Disney World in in, uh, in Florida, they've got over two hundred and fifty ways to recognize people. Mm. Now that that for a lot most people when I tell them that it feels like overkill. Well, we, we don't have any, so but it's not overkill to Disney because it gives them a flexibility and the power to stop something and start something else up. It's nothing is forever, so we're, we're going to experiment. If that works, we're going to continue it. Yeah, that's, well, last time good. I checked, uh, it's always good to go and learn from people who are doing it really well. And Disney has one of those places where their employees are amazing, no matter what section of the park you go to. Uh, I mean, it's always clean. They're always happy. They know what they're supposed to be doing. So if you're going to learn from anybody, Disney's a great place to be learning. Now, I don't know if I'd be tossing a coconut. I mean, that sounds like a workers' comp thing going around, but... Maybe like a squishy little, you know, uh, a squishy little extra live or something to toss Anything around. Anything off your shelf back there. Anything off your shelf. <laughs> toss yeah. the conch, right? I yeah. have the conch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, last little thing before we head out. Um, we're big on video testimonials because we know that that's what helps. Uh, word of mouth is one of the best marketing tools out there. And testimonials is a way of recording word of mouth. So if you guys can do me a favor, hopefully I've uh, set the bar pretty high for these podcast tours that you're going on. What was your experience like on the Business Bros podcast? It this was, was the most fun. Good. 
this was the most fun I've had. It's great. I liked your yeah. your little commercials the there. Root canal you had last week. <laughs> <laughs> I like the little commercials you have in there with the, yeah, with the guy from the Godfather. That's that's great. Very this fun. is a lot of fun. So it's good you're, like, you're like my brother yeah. from another mother. That's right. I love it. Plus, you're bald like me, so it works. And <laughs> what? I, I can, oh, I, I am. <laughs> No, <laughs> put that wig back on. <laughs> You'll notice, by the way, if you go to the back of the book, you will see Dr. Bob's afro in high school, and you'll see my afro in high school. They're re the real deal. We went to different high schools, and we we, we pretty much looked the same. <laughs> we found that we found those pictures after we knew each other for 34 years. So yeah. it was it was fun and surprising. But well, for I those tell, of you I youngins remember, back there, like I this is what it. happens. Every generation we go through it, right? So when we talk about how your clothes looks funny, your hair looks funny, we're not speaking because we we're trying to tell you something. We know from experience. We look back at our yearbooks. Yeah, <laughs> we know exactly yeah. what's going we, on. We thought we looked good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We didn't know what we thought. Oh, All right, but Herman, I could tell that you're—I could tell that you'd be an excellent teacher just from our interactions here today. So I think thanks for modeling that behavior and help helping other people to loosen up. And, and the energy—you not... had such great energy. Great well, thank energy. Thank you, thank you, guys. I mean, literally, this is uh, this is a highlight of my day. I love doing the show. I love having fun on this thing. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a conversation. You have literally blessed me with knowledge today, your experience and your wisdom from what you've been doing in your lives. Uh, and you get to share with me and the audience. I don't know if there's any other way that we as humans can become better as a civilization than by having conversations with other people. No matter how different you are, vaxxed, unvaxxed, black, white, Republican, Democrat, doesn't really matter. Have a conversation with people and I can almost guarantee you that you'll find similarities, you'll find commonalities, you'll find fun stuff to talk about. And if you don't, you can always pick up a book at www.drbobnelson.com and find fun ways to do some icebreakers and some interactions, virtual and in person. Nice. It's a, it's a nice. deal. You it's learned deal. very well. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. You, have chosen, you have chosen wisely. You have chosen wisely. All right, ladies and gents, uh, guys, thank, you, thank you very much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you again uh, manana. Peace. And we're Peace out. out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the business bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the insurance bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.biz.